Welcome to Abiding Presence Ministries for Divine Worship on the seventh Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant will be Bishop William Cavins. The intention for today's celebration is Bishop Cavins on his birthday weekend. Our entrance hymn is number 477, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. brothers and sisters, as we gather on this seventh Sunday of Easter, let us call to mind those times we have failed to love others as we love ourselves, and ask God for his pardon and forgiveness. As we bless ourselves with this Easter water, may we be reminded of our baptismal commitment to love as Christ loved us. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Gloria is just the state of Gloria in Terra Pops. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Glory in the church, the state of glory of it, in ten of pots. Glory in the church, the state of glory of it, in ten of pots. Let us pray. Eternal God, reaching from end to end of the universe and ordering all things with your mighty arm. 
For you, time is the unfolding of truth that already is, the unveiling of beauty that is yet to be. Your Christ has saved us in history by rising from the dead, so that transcending time, he might free us from death. May his presence among us lead us to the vision of unlimited truth and unfold the beauty of your love. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Let us be attentive. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, my brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who rested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may another take his office. Therefore, it's necessary that one of the men who accompanied us this whole time, accompanied us the whole time, the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become a, with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Judas, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of this in this apostolic ministry, which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, for he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. 
Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and who remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, glory to to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me. And I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world, any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them to the truth. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them so that they may they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel wipe our sins away. Have you ever taken a bathroom break while watching a movie? Either in a theater or even in your house. Think, oh, this is a good time I can take run off to the bathroom real quick. When you come back, you're completely lost because while you thought it was a convenient time to run and take care of business, you miss some important pieces. That's how I feel, or that's what I feel happens when people celebrate on this Sunday, the Feast of the Ascension, which we celebrated on Thursday they miss out on some really great readings that sort of explain to us today 
how the church should operate. We start off in that first reading here about how the 11 needed to replace Judas, who's referred to in the gospel as the son of destruction. And they gathered a community about them who proposed some candidates after prayer. And then the 11 chose Matthias. That's supposedly how it's supposed to work today. Names are requested. Bishops decide whether the candidate or candidates are worthy of being uh, consecrated and then go on to the consecration. It was much the same with me, but instead of a group of bishops submitting names, it was the congregation that elected and then three bishops confirmed the election and ordained me. What it's saying to us is that this apostolic tradition rooted in Christ is passed on through the laying on of hands. And it is in that tradition that we trace ourselves back to the head of the church, Jesus Christ. So what is the church being, what are these bishops being charged to do? Well, we hear that in our second reading. We're charged to help form communities that are based in love. It is one of the things that is said about the early church that confounded many of the people in power. See these Christians, how they love one another was often heard as a complaint, as, you know, what's wrong with them that they would willingly put themselves out for somebody else. And yet that's what we're called upon to do. That's the focus of what we try to do here at Abiding Presence. You know, feeding the hungry, counseling, trying to visit those in hospitals and nursing homes, all done out of love, not for a sense of a lot of money, because there is no money involved, except for maintenance fees to keep things going, if you will. None of our ministers receive a salary. But it's just based on love. And Jesus takes it a little further in the gospel letting us know that he is one with the Father. And anyone that belongs to him, whom the Father has given to him, and that includes you and me today, Jesus is asking God to protect us as he protected us here. And if we are a people based on love, and we are being truthful and try to stay live our lives according to the scriptures then we are one with Christ and if we're one with Christ we too are one with the father not in the same way that Christ is one because he is the only begotten one but we are one in that same spirit As we go about this last week of the Easter season, let us examine ourselves to see if we are truly a people who live our lives based on love, if we're a people of belief in Jesus Christ. And if we are, let us rejoice and come into next Sunday in the Feast of Pentecost, expecting great miracles to continue to happen in our lives.
Let us stand and profess our faith, reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man for our sake. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> o God, your Son remained with his disciples after his resurrection, teaching them to love all people as neighbors. As his disciples in this age, we offer our prayers on behalf of the universe in which we are privileged to live and our neighbors with whom we share it. Our response is, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. For the unity of everyone baptized in the Christ body, for the church, the sign of unity for which he died, Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. For sacrificial support of our parish, church, and charities, Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen, risen indeed, indeed, alleluia. For our cities, townships, our states, and country, for peace within and between nations, for equitable sharing of the world's resources, Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. For the COVID-19 pandemic, it will bring forth, that will bring to birth a greater sense of compassion among all peoples and a greater willingness to provide care for those in need. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. For the sick and those in danger of death, they be comforted by God's abiding presence. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. For all who grieve, especially the family of Bishop Terry Valair, that their mourning will be turned to dancing as they hear, hold, and welcome the message of the resurrection in their hearts. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. For armed forces and their safe return home, for the relief of the people of Iraq and of every land at war. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. For our newly ordained priests, deacons, and the parishes they will serve, for our sisters and brothers called to consecrated life. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. For own needs, for those that stand in need of prayer and have no one to pray for them, for those who have asked for prayers, especially those who remember now. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ, Christ is risen indeed, indeed alleluia. alleluia. Open our hearts to your power moving around us and between us and within us until your glory is revealed in our love of both friend and enemy, in communities transformed for justice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the, our almighty creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all the church. Lord, accept the prayers and gifts we offer in faith and love. May this Eucharist bring us to your glory. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his risen body, Christ plainly showed himself to his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight to claim for us a share in his divine life. And so, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. fountain of all holiness. Send down your spirit upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which is given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Remembering, therefore, Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, 
this living bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We pray that all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Protect us in love together with the patriarchs and the ministers of love. With me, your unworthy bishop, and with all bishops, deacons, and priests, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died into in your mercy, into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have found favor with you throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours, almighty creator, forever and ever. brothers and sisters of the Lord, we dare to praise Jesus himself taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all sin and anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, who grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with each other some sign of that peace. Peace be with all of you, Helen. Peace, Jesus. Peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his table. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Amen. The act of spiritual communion for those who cannot be present to receive today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot now at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. 
the table is prepared. Come, eat, and drink. Our communion hymn is number 756, where charity and love prevail. Thanksgiving is number 478. Rejoice, the Lord is pleased. in honor of Mary is number 432. Be joyful, Mary, heavenly queen. Oh, Mary. The Lord has 
God, our Savior, hear us, and through this holy mystery, give us hope that the glory you have given Christ will be given to the church, his body, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I do appreciate the birthday greetings I've been receiving on Facebook all weekend, and uh, they are much appreciated. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Mass will be indoors. Uh, we polled the congregation and no one seemed to want to have an outdoor celebration. Uh, so Mass will be here. If you are coming to Mass here at, the, uh, at my residence, please wear red, uh, the color of the Holy Spirit. So um, I think that would be appropriate. You'll be able to read the bulletin a little later today. It will be posted on our website, AbidingPresenceMinistries.com. We are looking for people uh, that would be willing to help do the readings. Uh, it's called being a lector. Men or women, does not matter. Um, we're also looking for ministers to the sick to help visit in nursing homes. We're looking also for catechists to help with teaching. So if you're interested in any of those, please contact me at the email address that is listed on the website. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God, help your people to rejoice in the mystery of redemption and to win its reward. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 431, The Strife is Over. Strife is o'er the battle done. Now is the victor strife won. Oh, let the song of praise be sung. Hallelujah! 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 Shouts of thanks and joy of hearts. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.